he is the best in the business, I am proud to say. He's KTRS legal analyst. He's also a professor at St. Louis University Law School. Greg Willard, welcome back to the hot seat here on the Big 550 KTRS. Good morning, McGraw. Uh, you worked as a White House attorney? Uh, White House staff assistant to President Ford. And then uh, you've gone on to work with him and his foundation, right? And all yes. that? Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul Manafort worked for the Ford uh, administration. Did you know him at all back then? I did not. I, I remember the name. He, uh, he worked for the uh, campaign committee okay. in 1976 and was... Uh, actively involved at the Kansas City Convention, but uh, I never was personally acquainted with him. Okay. Uh, now, uh, before we get started, because we have lots of questions, there was also a, let's see how smart you are, <laughs> there was a George Papadopoulos involved in the Nixon years, was there not? Uh, you're, you're taking me deep. I know there was a foreign official, a George Papadopoulos foreign official. Yes, who was uh, like busted for giving him money, like uh, illegal... F- Funneling into his campaign or something. Yeah, the, he was not part of Water. The Papadopoulos, I recall, was not part of the Watergate saga, but there was a Papadopoulos involved uh, in, in some activity that was uh, somewhat nefarious it back was in the next Funneling Nixon money from the Hunter or something like that? Or <laughs> something, but, uh, but, but not the same George Papadopoulos. Correct. Yeah, right. not, not the young man we're going to talk about today. Uh, what the, the beauty you bring to this is that you are nonpartisan, you are fact based, and so people get the news straight from you uh unvarnished truth and you deal in facts is this a nothing burger where they got a low level staffer or did robert Mueller send a message that he's coming for the big guys history will tell us for sure whether this is a nothing burger but to uh quote shakespeare uh from the tempest what's past is prologue um and i think it does not take a stretch of the imagination, McGraw, to uh, think um, Mr. Papadopoulos and James McCord from the Watergate days. Mm. McCord was one of the Watergate burglars. Right. So yesterday, Sarah Sanders says from the White House briefing room that, uh, oh, well, Papadopoulos was just a volunteer on an advisory committee that met once. Right. Well, her predecessor, Ron Ziegler, famously said, oh, well, Watergate was just a third-rate burglary. Right. Well, we all know that Watergate did not, did, uh, turned out not to be just a third-rate burglary. So let's see if yesterday turns out to be a nothing burger. All right. So uh, you watched all this. You read the indictment. What are your takeaways? What, what sort of stood out to you in the last 24 hours? Well, let's separate it with... Uh, with Manafort and Gates, mm-hmm. and then let's uh, speak separately about the Papadopoulos plea agreement. Right. I guess what struck me with the Manafort and Gates uh, indictment was, number one, the specificity that the grand jury was provided in terms of the wire transfers and the payments. Uh, secondly, the lavishness of the expenditures, right. hundreds of thousands of dollars now we for should suits. Say, right. I mean, he went in and paid for suits, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he funneled the money through a bank in Cyprus. Correct. Which Correct. is a weird way to buy hundreds of thousands of dollars of suits. Right. And, and uh, improvements to his house in the Hamptons and his apartment in uh, Brooklyn. He put a moat in his house in the, <laughs> somewhere. He bought a moat. <laughs> right. so. With a boat, perhaps, in it. <laughs> but it, so I think... I was struck by the specificity of the information that the grand jury had and then the lavishness of it. Um, And so what we have with Manafort and Gates, McGraw, are a series of very, very serious charges. I mean, these are serious felonies of money laundering and conspiracy. Um, There are a lot of pundits who are saying, well, this uh, this is all done, particularly the lavishness allegations to put pressure on Manafort to flip him. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps so, and we'll see. Separately, this young man, Papadopoulos, pled guilty to lying to the FBI. Right. When you read his plea agreement and and his admission as part of that of the fact, it's pretty tawdry also. And it's also um, in the category of, of, uh, you just sort of rhetorically say, really? Um, so the, this young man was contacted by a, quote, professor from London um, who then set up a meeting with Vladimir Putin's niece. Um, now, I was born at night, McGraw, but not last <laughs> night. 
<laughs> and the idea that I just happened to meet this Russian uh, in Italy, and then subsequently just he just happens to bring Vladimir Putin's niece to a meeting. Um, unfortunately for Mr. Papadopoulos, he took the bait. Right. And even more unfortunately for Mr. Papadopoulos, he lied to the FBI about it. Yes. So this is a big deal. Uh, shortly in January, before Robert Mueller became special counsel in the James Comey investigation during the FBI, he lied to the FBI. And then proceeded to delete his Facebook account, which had some of the uh, of his communications with the, quote, professor. Right. Um, and took other steps to try to conceal his tracks. And then in July, he was arrested. July 27th, I think it was, uh, he was uh, at Dulles Airport outside of Washington, and uh, w the FBI arrested him that day. And no one ever knew the name George Papadopoulos. He never popped up. It wasn't leaked or anything else until yesterday. What does that tell you, Greg Willard? Well, what it, what, what it tells us and what was revealed yesterday tells us a lot, McGraw, in that in the papers at the courthouse in Washington that were unsealed yesterday, mm -hmm. um, Papadopoulos is stated to be, by the government, a proactive cooperator. Proactive cooperator. If you go back into court files in other cases, you will find that term used very often in undercover investigations where they flip a witness and they wear a wire. So I think it is a, a logical uh, hypothesis that after July 27th, Papadopoulos flipped. He has been, quote, a proactive cooperator in the intervening three months and they got from him about others what they wanted to get. And having completed that, they go public yesterday with the plea agreement. Um, how much of this is they released Manafort or they arrested Manafort and they arrested this Gates, but also on the same day they released this? Is Robert Mueller sending a message to anybody or anything about releasing these on the same day? Unquestionably so. And what is he saying? What, is, what he is saying is, uh, as they said, in the court papers that were unsealed. This is an extensive and wide-ranging investigation. Until yesterday, McGraw, we had heard virtually nothing from Robert Mueller. Right. But now that court papers began to be filed, we can go to those, and yesterday's filings, or yesterday's uh, unsealing uh, was, was very, I think, uh, informative. So I think the fact that the arrest of Manafort and Gates and the handing up of the indictment against them combined within, what, an hour or two yesterday of the announcement and unsealing of the Papadopoulos documents, that is a very clear signal, and there are now very clear statements on the record in the federal courthouse in D.C. that this is very serious and wide-ranging. You worked in the White House. You're working in the White House. You're a staffer in the White House. You're junior, you're senior, wherever, and you're like, whoa. This Papadopoulos was wearing a wire. Do you say to yourself, who else in this room is wearing a wire? Well, I, th I think that's inevitable, McGraw, that whether, let's assume for the moment that, that in your hypothetical that I'm a White House staffer and I had nothing to do with the campaign. Right. I was out fly fishing in Montana right. last year. Um, it still is going to have an impact in the day-to-day -day dynamics around the White House. It can't help because lots of people around the White House were involved in the campaign. And again, to go back to our Watergate analogy, we've seen this movie before when the, a, a special prosecutor in those days, special counsel Mueller today, begins to reach into the highest echelons of the campaign mm -hmm. and begins to implicate people in the White House. So, for example, with whom did Papadopoulos talk? between July 27th and yesterday. Right. If he talked to somebody in the White House, they did not have a good night last night. <laughs> <laughs> similarly, similarly with Manafort, right. um, is um, with whom on the White House staff, and it doesn't take a, a stretch of the imagination to posit several, had significant interaction with Manafort during the campaign. Right. Well, they probably did not have a good night last night either. He was in that meeting with 
Donald Trump Jr. that the Russian lawyer was bringing, right? We have the email of the Russian lawyer, hey, I've got dirt on Hillary. So now this is now two, you know, Manafort and Don, Donald Trump Jr. now Papadopoulos are two connections to somebody from Russia with connections to the Kremlin saying we've got info on Hillary Clinton. That's the July 9th, 2016 meeting, I think you're referring right. to McGraw. And it's, it was the meeting in Trump Tower. Manafort was there. I don't know about Gates, but Donald Jr. was there. And when you, when you look at the email traffic that Donald Jr. released leading up to that meeting, and then you look at Papadopoulos's plea agreement yesterday right. leading up to his meeting with the, quote, professor and Putin's niece, for goodness sakes. But the point being, you look at those two scenarios, you could switch the name McGraw, and they are darn near identical. Right. So, again, we'll have to wait and see as to then what transpired after the July 9th uh, meeting with Donald Trump Jr., if anything, perhaps nothing. But the fact that you have the, the, the Russian, clearly, intelligence apparatus involved in trying to precipitate both of those meetings, if nothing else, it confirms what a lot of people have said, is that Russian meddling, mm -hmm. I, won't, I won't go into the colluding word, but right. Russian meddling was omnipresent. Okay, uh, lots more to get to, and I want to get to this question, even though we're late for a break, Greg, uh, Greg Wood. Can you stay through another break? Happy to, sure. Um, if it is proven that Donald Trump's campaign and Donald Trump himself sat down with Vladimir Putin's niece and aunt and Vladimir Putin himself and devised a way... We, we picked off this email and that email, and we got this, and we got pictures of her and this and that. Is that against the law? Well, I guess there's two questions. Uh, you know, is it a, is it a felony? Um, and I think the Trump supporters would say, with that horrible scenario that you just posited, uh, that's not against the law. I think the Trump opponents would say, uh, it is against the law. It's a private citizen having contacts with foreign officials. You, you use Putin himself in that right. example. So you've got private citizens involved in a, in a, uh, a direct contact with foreign officials, and, and the, the opponents would say, well, most clearly that's a felony. I think if in that horrible scenario that you just raised, McGraw, right. I think we have not a legal question. We have a constitutional question right. no, of impeachment. No, I, I get that. It might be an impeachable offense. I'm, quite, I'm asking you, is it against the law? Is there a law that says that you're not allowed to collude with a foreigner who has stolen emails or some, you know, some variation thereof? Well, collude with a foreigner to what end? Uh, collude with a foreigner to plan a vacation. Well, that, obviously that's not a crime. Collude with a foreigner to affect uh, U.S. policy, collude with a foreigner to corrupt uh, the U.S. election, that's right. probably uh, a multiple felony. Yeah, McGraw. somewhere in there. All right, stay right there. we got lots more to get to. Greg Ollard with us, professor at St. Louis University Law School, trying to break down exactly what's transpired over the last 24 hours. 923 here, Big 550 KTRS. Let me tell you 